Okay, shoaling waves, when they finally come onto the beach, they will break in a particular way depending on the gradient of the beach, i.e. how steep it's sloping, and the height of the wave. Now, there are three main types of breaking wave. We have a, um, a plunging breaker where the wave height really curls up uh, on a steep beach and plunges down onto the beach. Not much swash, uh, a lot of backwash though, and you can get some quite fierce rip currents with those. The other one is again with, this, with this, uh, a sloping beach, a steeply sloping beach, uh, the wave can collapse on itself and surge up the beach, something called a surging breaker. But here, um, on this particular beach, you can see that the waves are foaming quite a way out in the distance. Uh, and then they are rolling in onto the sand. It's a relatively low gradient beach. And that's typical of what we call um, a spilling breaker, okay? Because they gradually spill and they gradually uh, move, progress across the beach. And of course, as they do so, they are losing energy. And so that means that this beach is quite dissipative. It offers a dissipative uh, regime uh, in terms of the wave energy, because the wave energy is dissipated. On a more steeply sloping beach, that wave energy is reflected, and we call that a reflective domain. Now, when a wave comes up to the coastline, it's not only influenced by the seabed, where the wave base intercepts the seabed and friction occurs and shoaling happens and so on, but it also is affected by um, headlands sticking out and the submarine contours around there. Because, of course, with a headland sticking out into the ocean, you, uh, the, the, the contours are going to be sticking out into the ocean a bit further. So the wave, as it approaches, will uh, feel bottom, if you like, uh, before uh, off the headlands than it will in the bay. So it starts to slow down around the headlands first. And because of that, the wave front is actually focused around the headland. And so wave energy, if you draw lines at right angles of the wave crests as they come in, something we call orthogonals, they actually point in towards the headland which means that the headland is characterized by very strong wave energy, concentration of wave energy. But in the bay, the wave uh, crest sp uh, is diverging and the orthogonals diverge, which means that there's far less wave energy in the beaches. And what we can see here in this beach between the headlands is that we get deposition of sand in the embayment because it's low energy. But in the headland in the distance, We've got an erosional uh, regime in terms of the geomorphological processes. It's rocky, there's cliffs, there's wave cut platforms, um, typical of uh, an erosional environment. So that's a process of focusing of wave energy, and we call that refraction. And the last, perhaps, uh, important uh, wave modification process is if you've got a headland sticking out and the wave front is going past it, of course, part of the wave will break onto the headland, but the rest of the wave will actually travel past it. But behind the headland, you don't have an area that's void uh, of um, waves. You will have waves in that. And that's because as the wave crest gets uh, truncated by the headland, you get a sort of bleeding effect of the wave energy into the, what we call the shadow zone behind. And so you get waves there due to this process. And that process is called diffraction. So even though you may think behind a headland is quite sheltered uh, and you might want to moor your, your yacht or your boat there, you will still get waves and perhaps sometimes damaging waves behind there because of this process of diffraction. So refraction, diffraction and also um, the reflection of waves is also important. Now reflections of waves are important for a couple of reasons. First of all, if you've got a harbour wall which is a solid structure and you have a wave crashing up against it that will be reflected back out because a bit like a drumstick beating on a, on, a, on a drum skin, it's reflected back and that's what happens to the waves. In doing so, like a drum as well, the structure, the seawall, whatever it happens to be, will vibrate, will resonate and if it's got weaknesses in there, that vibration could start to tease the, the construction apart and lead to failure of the seawall, which has happened in a number of cases. But also, and the natural conditions where you get a, a wave reflecting off a headland, a rocky headland, it can actually travel parallel to the beach, going back down the beach as what we call an edge wave. And the, if, the consequence of that is that on the beach you can sometimes get what we call beach cusps, where the edge wave uh, interferes with the incident wave coming into the beach um, to form these rhythmic, rhythmically spaced uh, features, uh, which we'll see in a minute.